It's 9.30 a.m. in New York City, and employees are getting ready for another day at Uniqlo. Did you find what you were looking for? If you've never heard of Uniqlo before, it's the fourth largest fashion retailer in the world, with a reputation for design and Japanese service. There are only six stores in the U.S., but the Tokyo-based company wants 200 here by the end of the decade. It's all part of what you might say is Uniqlo's plan to take over the world. We as a company are seeking to achieve $50 billion in sales by the year 2020, 10 billion of which are supposed to be here in the United States. So that would make you the number one apparel retailer in the world. Correct. And that's your goal. That's our goal. Yasunobu Kiyogoku is one of the executives responsible for making that happen. It's very easy for the customer to find their side. He showed me around Uniqlo's San Francisco store. And there's an aesthetic experience, too, going on here. I think, yes, Uniqlo's no... It feels a little more like an art gallery than a clothing store. Not going to resist <laughs> trying so, on clothes. Rather than trying on 12 different Thank colors you. of uh, a particular item, for Ooh. example, we can touch this LCD screen and rather instantaneously <gasps> change <Whoa>. colors. <laughs> Oh, that's so, amazing. So you just made it bright green. If you, nice. Just one example of how shopping here like isn't what you'd expect. Thank you. Let's try bright green. What Uniqlo does is it says, we'll give you a t-shirt for $4.95 and we'll make you feel the same thing you'd feel if you were going into a designer store and buying a $400 garment. Simon Collins is Dean of Fashion at Parsons, the new school for design. He's a big fan of Uniqlo, but he wasn't always. You really didn't like it in the beginning. I didn't. I didn't like it. I found the volume of colors to be slightly oppressive. But after a few more visits, he noticed something. They care about how the staff look. They care about the experience of dealing with the staff and purchasing the garment. They care about how the store looks. And you feel that. About 70% of a store employee's shift is spent folding. Like a finger space away? They're timed and tested to do it as neatly and quickly as possible. Hands up. Hands so up. no cheating. <laughs> Three, two, one, start. Take Julie Lin, who can fold seven pairs of jeans in less than a minute. And then we use the remaining just to tidy it up so it looks extra pretty. That was 43 seconds, so that is really good. Keep smiling. Keep smiling. Keep smiling. All right, Paul, you're getting there. And if that's not enough, employees are even trained how to smile. I'm going to play devil's advocate okay. here. Isn't that micromanaging just a little bit? Yes, it is micromanagement. But what builds a great business is that attention to detail. And that is what allows us to control the entire experience and I think is a competitive advantage. Uniqlo began in 1984 when founder Tadashi Inai took over his father's clothing shop in Hiroshima. My father didn't expect me to go into clothing too. He even told me once, you do whatever you feel. Basically, that's what I've done for 40 years. Yanai renamed the store Unique Clothing Warehouse and later shortened it to Uniqlo. Today, he oversees a fashion empire as chairman, president, and CEO of Uniqlo. Oh, and did we mention he's also the richest man in Japan? When you talk about world expansion and domination, isn't that just PR talk? I think that's a great question for Mr. Inai, but again, one has to remember that in less than 30 years, he started from one store to 1,200 stores in 12 countries around the world. Come on, the <laughs> biggest brand in the world in seven years? Our chairman always likes to say, aim high. <laughs> Aiming high. One bright color, one crisp fold. And one polite smile at a time. Bye, thank you, have a great day. Welcome.